So today, uh, Fika will be giving us a tutor. She's uh, 10 Academy, she's part of our 10 Academy team, and she'll be leading today's uh, tutorial. So yes, uh, over to you, Fika. You can start now. Okay, how, hey everyone, how are you? My name is Fikar Talamayo. I'm a prompt engineer in Tien Academy. Today we'll be covering the starting from the generative AI to LLM, and we will see a demo of how we can use large language models to do a very uh, impressive tasks in our daily lives to achieve a better results. So I will be sharing my slides. Okay. Can you see my screen? Oh, okay. Okay. Let's start. Uh, we'll see first the generative AI and LLM. Uh, today's content will be first generative AI and LLM, then prompt engineering and the role of prompt in uh, instructing the LLM. Then we have designing what strategy should we use to design an effective prompt. Then we, we will demonstrate how to use uh, the prompt engineering method to uh, real world demonstrations. Okay, first, when we talk about generative AI, we have to start from artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is, uh, uh, acts on a data following preset of rules. It's, it tries to micmac or to impersonate a human intelligence. Uh, how to do, how to learn how, from experience, how to act on uh, its own with reasoning. Uh, then we have machine learning. It's learn, it identifies and learn from data and it's try to predict and uh, give us insight into the data collected. Then we have generative AI and it goes further. And instead of learning and identifying patterns, it starts to uh, create new data. From the data it was trained on, it creates new data. So currently we are in generative AI generation. Uh, from just uh, accepting data as an input, it's also learning and creating new data. Uh, generative AI refers to us as, uh, it's uh, like I said, creating any content. It could be from image, music, video, to text and codes. The generative parts imply that the AI model is not just analyzing the data, it's also creating new data that didn't exist uh, before. So it's, it's getting there, it's reaching the point of thinking and outputting new data. So it's a progress from machine learning to deep learning within the large language models or generative AI is based on deep learning models that are deep learning model are artificial intelligence, artificial neural networks. It's the it's based on the human brain, the interconnected of the neurons. So uh, behind the generative AIs are uh, a deep learning models that's been trained on billions, trillions of data. Uh, when we say large language models, when we say generative AI, it includes image, music, videos to text and codes. But when you say large language models, it's focused on the natural language uh, tasks, uh, mean, it's, which means it's focusing on text and uh, language processing tasks. It's mainly focusing on natural language. Uh, example of LLM includes OpenAI GPT and uh, Google's Bart. Uh, they are only the transition of the LLM come from the paper which uh, Google uh, from Google that use how how can we use uh, an attention a transformer it was the core point that 
made uh, from machine learning to deep learning to generative AI, the core point was the transformer, the paper that was done on transformer. So it's, if you can, you if you could see that paper, it's an impressive one. Okay, when we move to the language models, we have to input the in, uh, text as an input for so that it can respond to our tasks. We call that as a prompt. Designing a prompt is essentially programming the language model, how to act, how to respond to users, and uh, how should uh, the LLM, uh, uh, how the LLM should accomplish that task. So uh, when designing a prompt, you have to think about how, what are the input the LLM is getting? What should be the output we expect from the LLM? So uh, prompt engineering for LLM involves uh, prompt engineering. We have designed the prompt then. It's an iterative mechanism. It just, it's not just designing the prompt. You have to start experimenting, try it. Does it give us the proper output? Is it accurate? Is it relevant? So all this is included in the prompt engineering for learned language model. model. Uh, okay. Uh, for a strategy for getting better results includes, uh, you have to include detail in your query to get more relevant uh, answers. If you give it short hundred questions, it's not going to be, it's not going to give you a good answer. So you have to give it detail, what task are you are trying to achieve, what should be, ex what should you are expecting and what resource should the LLM use in order to achieve that task. And you, next, you have to ask the model to adapt the persona. We have different role within the LLM. Most we mainly focusing on OpenAI today. So in OpenAI, in the chat compilation, uh, in the point or API, we have different roles. The first role we'll see it later in the code, but the first role is the system role, which is the, the persona you give to the system. If you ask it to act as a data engineer, it will, it will be, it will get the persona of a data engineer. If you added a little bit detail, saying that you are an expert, you have experience, it will be, it will go more to being accurate. Uh, then we have a user message and uh, assistant message. The user messages, the user inquiry then the assistant messages the response you get from the llm then another thing we have to use is delimiters to de clearly indicate the distinct parts of the input if we give it a context if you give it uh, a user query anything you give it to the llm you have to delimit it with some kind of identifier so that it's not considering it as a simple text but as a distinct a distinct niche inputs so and these are the best practice you have to adapt in your prompt design uh, specify that if you are building a longer or if uh, there's multiple steps within the task you are giving to the LLM you have to specify the you have to specify the steps divide it step one will be do this, do this, do this. Then when you get the input, the output from that one, step two will be do this, do this, do this. So when you divide the uh, the tasks into the steps, the results will be much clearer. Uh, I'm not sure if you are, if anything, am I rushing? If you can give me some heads up. Is it good so far? You can write for me if there is any question. Okay, okay. Then if I'm too fast, just let me know. Then the other thing is provide examples. Uh, we have different uh, approach to uh, designing a prompt. One is giving, there's a free shot, a zero shot learning uh, prompting. Then there is 
ዜሮሻት ፊውሻት ፕሮምፕት ቴክኒክስ when we give it zero shot we just give it a query we don't give it an example we don't give it any context we just ask the questions this is probably most probably going to cause an inaccurate result but if we give it some form of example the llm model is more prone to answer the questions accurately then we have another one chain of thought prompt design technique when we say chain of thought design chain of thought uh, design, prompt design technique we are going to give it the llm an example then a way to for the llm to think if we are if you are asked to calculate uh, 24 times 28 you're just going to need a little bit a little bit of time in order to get the right answer right as long as much as human are llms also need a little bit of time to think and reach the correct uh, reach the correct output so we just give it an example of how to execute the task it's just giving an example then the other one is if we are using a zero shot chain of thought from technique from design technique just add things step by step you cannot believe how much different the this line of uh, sentence make in the reasoning of the llm so with uh, with adapting this type of prompt engineering techniques we can make the output of the llm or the open ai uh, model a little bit accurate a little bit reasonable so uh, these are the designs these are some of the designs it's not the complete you have to look for the papers there's so much paper around how to design a, a good prompt so we have to look and learn from different people different research papers how are they designing the the prompts so these are the ones that are doing well in the currently uh, because we have a context a context window for llms for openai in the gpt 3.45 there is a 497 uh, inputs prompt uh, inputs context window so you have to limit your input in order to uh, to uh, in order to be in between that so it's not out of the limit uh, maximum limits is not rich uh, and every request is count uh, it's costing you money so you have to take knowledge of for every request you have to take what are the uh, output i need what links of output do i need you have to analyze that then for you, each of your inputs you're going you're going to send to llm you have to think about is this worth it because at the end of the day it's costing you money uh, keep track of your experiment that's the main point you have to think when you are sending the requests okay let me just it's both it count the input and the output also for the most probably for the completion the chat, uh, chat completion there's 4097 context uh, window context so for inputs for your uh, your prompt uh, for your system message for user message for the response from the your uh, LLM, you have to think about it. You have to calculate how much should I look it. Uh, and you have to summarize if it's long document or it's long request, you have to try to chunk it and summarize it in order to deal with the context window. I think, does that answer your question? Okay. So, uh, specify the links of the output. You have to do that. And then let's move on to the code. 
Okay. Uh, have you installed? Have you installed the uh, Mahalit? I don't know what you say. How do you say delimited? I'll show you. I'll show you that. Uh, then, have you installed OpenAI in your systems? Anyone? Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so we have uh, generated a, a secret key for you to use as the API a request to send a request to API. Uh, we will give you that. I think it's available in the challenge document and on Slack too. So you have to properly use the you have to properly use the API key because it's you are sharing one key it's going to cost many so when you experiment properly see what are uh, how much token are you sending to the in the point and uh, what are the result to expect and just not just sending until you get some reasonable uh, result see re design your prompts again what when you see the result you have to think about it what's going what's misleading the model so you have to redesign it, take careful look at it, and send the request again, OK? It's just because it's going to cost money, you have to think about the after cost, OK? You got it, right? Yeah, OK. Then uh, you can see my screen. If you haven't installed OpenAI, you just go to the terminal. I already installed it, but you just go to the terminal and install OpenAI. Uh, just keep install OpenAI and this will automatically install it. Uh, if you encounter any error, you just, you just can DM me. Uh, there's not a quota risk limit on the OpenAI key. There's a limit, usage limit, but risk limit means how much you can send per minute, how much you can send per hour. But there's a usage limit. Uh, you are using one key for each group. So in order to for everyone to use it fairly, just I'm just saying just uh, be careful of what you send. Just don't send it until you get the, just don't resend it until you get the expected result, okay? Properly design your prompt, then send your uh, request. So I'm just going to move on to the code. Uh, okay, uh, we are using the GPT 3.5 Turbo. Uh, you have to store your uh, secret key in your inv, inv, inv uh, for uh, file and uh, make sure you git ignore it. Oh, I'm not sharing my screen. Can you see my screen? The code? Okay. So, uh, you have to store your secret key in .env file and add it to the git ignore so that when you are pushing into pushing your code to GitHub, it's not published there. Uh, then, uh, in order to access your OpenAI key, you have to install .env. It's a library that will fetch environment uh, from environment uh, secret keys. So uh, install that, then we have OpenAI. From uh, .inf, we have to get the OpenAI key. This will assign the key, the OpenAI key, this variable. And then there's a completion 
API. When we say completion API, it just takes the prompt, then the model. There's nothing, there's no role. You just ask the question. So uh, this is the completion API. It's currently, we are not using it that much because it doesn't give us the persona or any characteristics we need to give to the model. So we are, this is a legacy API endpoint. So when we run this one, it's going to give us uh, right, a tagline for ice cream shop. It's going to give us a scoping, a smile, one cone at a time. It's, it's creative, but in order to give it character, in order to give it some kinds of uh, creative persona, uh, the chat completion is much better. Uh, so here we have the chat completion uh, from op op OpenAI. Uh, we have to assign the client to OpenAI, client.chat.completion.create. Uh, we have to uh, give it the model, then the message. When we come to the message, there's a system message. You are an expert in writing tagline for ice cream shop. You are a creative, creative and original. You can say anything. Uh, you can give it... A, any uh, characteristics you want. You can just, you can experiment with this, anything you like, but it will give you, it will give you the proper persona to the system. Then you have the user that's asking the, the query, right? A, a tagline for an ice cream shop. When we execute this, scoop into pure happiness this if you, you can see that this is much more uh, creative and anything you add to the system prompt anything you, you can add to the system prompt it will be uh, inflicted into the message by the assistant as you can see the role is the assistant the response you get from the open AI or the chat uh, completion is from the assistant role and the user message is the query from the user the system message is a persona or the everything that's the we want the open AI model to do we give it the, in the system message it can be as discreet as possible uh, you, you can say don't do this uh, do this uh, uh, divide into uh, a step, uh, think uh, step by step, so that any result is will be inflicted in your results. So uh, these rules are very important. You have to take note of it. And then uh, this is uh, general zero shot prompting. Then we have a few shot prompting. We show the assistant how it should respond. We have the system message. You are you are a helpful assistant. Then in the user message, who won the World Series in 2020? 2020. Then the assistant, the Los Angeles Dodgers, won the World Series. It will say we give it some kinds of example. How if you see, we didn't say anything about the Dodgers or anything. But from the assistant point of view we gave some examples so where was this played it will ask that that and it will give us where it was played okay just the world series was played at the global life field of arlington texas so uh, just because you gave it an example it will know where it should look so giving an example is a, a, a much better way to guide the, the LLM to a better result. So, okay, my, uh, I think uh, Milat asked me about this. How do we assign delimiters and a context? So uh, here is an example that will show us. Here we have a system 
message, use the provide article delimited by XML tags to answer the question. If an answer cannot be found the article, right, I cannot find the answer. Then you put your tag delimiters. This will help the OpenAI model to find, it will specifically look for the tag that will be the XML tag as defined in your system prompt, then it will accept the article as a context, as a reference. This is how you insert a reference or a context to the LLM model. Then from here, this is the context we gave it, the Winter Olympics uh, medallion winners. So in the system message, As you can see, it says inter inserted here. There is an XML tag. If you see here, automatically, sorry, automatically it will look for the tag until at the end. So when you give it the limiters, it will be able to see the where the context, where to look for something. When you put something in your prompt, just give it delimiters so that it will specifically address that, look for that and address it. Uh, then another thing you have to see here is we can count uh, the amount of token we are sending as a system message and as a user message. When uh, this is the function above, I give you the, here it is. So when we count, so we're giving, we are sending 850 tokens. Then we have the user message who won the gold medal in women's curling at 2020 Winter Olympics. When we say it's just 20, so we have used the delimiter. This is the response. When you make it a function, it will be much easier to reuse it and to use it for the, any task you want. Then we have the model ident uh, the model specified, the completion does, the role, the completion, the chat completion in the point, then the system message, the user message, then the maximum token output we want, uh, the frequency penalty, it just how how to penalize if it takes so much time or the princess uh, the temperature if it's given zero it's just constantly giving you the same answer but if you give it nine or ten random it's, it's become a random answering so every time you ask it another uh, form of answering will be provided so when you experiment try to adjust to identify which uh, which uh, temperature is suited for your purpose. Uh, it's clear, right? Is there any question? If you want, you can unmute and ask me any question so far. Anyone? So should I just move on? It's better if you can say something, if you want me to uh, clarify on some things before we move on. So we have to cover uh, a lot of things. So, so far, if you have any question, you can address it now. If there's none, we can move on. No, okay. Okay, then we call the, 
the get GPT response function. We call it, uh, let us say anybody. The gold medallia is won by the Great Britain. Uh, we, in order to verify that the answer is correct, we will go and it says 2022. So the Japan. Which one did we ask? It? 2022. So we verify that the curling is won by the Great Britain. Yeah, okay. Yep, Greece, Britain won. So the answer is correct. Then what if we say 2023? Then we rerun the function. Say I cannot find the answer. So when you are designing your chatbot, when you are designing your chatbot, if there is out of context questions. You can limit the response from the your chatbot by giving it this kind of command. If this, if you are given this this is kind of question, say you don't know. If this inputs if irrelevant or other than the context uh, question are asked, it's out of context. Like how Nana use, uh, it's not. I cannot find this. I cannot specify this. How she respond to that? You have to put specifically in your system prompt how you respond to uh, out of context equations. So until now, it's, it's clear, right? Anyone? Just yep. Yeah, okay. Okay. Then we move on to the function calling. We, uh, we have function calling within the OpenAI API. Uh, that does when you have some output, uh, you send a request to the LLM. Then we give it a function calling. It's a tool you have to activate on the LLM. Then when that function calling tool is activated or enabled, it will access based on the JSON format your function is following. It will, uh, it will let you know which function the output should be forwarded to. If you have multiple, let's say a function for weather, a function for a food, a function for a trip uh, suggestion, and the function, the open, the user queries about the weather. The OpenAI will answer the weather query from the user. Then that uh, question, that form of uh, user query, will trigger the function. Which function code should be made? That will be done with uh, OpenAI. So we have multiple. Let's say we have a user. Let's say you have a user request. You have multiple function. Then the open AI will analyze the user question and it will respond. Then it will activate, it will let it will activate which function should be the output, which function should the output be received by. As you can see, a function, uh, a function call is made. The opening I got the uh, user request. Then the 
z function is activated, then call the function z for the given input. So the function call is made, as you can see. So when we see the code for this, uh, we have the same setup as the previous one. In the, the, in the example below, LLM act as intermediary that translate user natural language request to structure a, a SQL query, which then executes by the database to, to fetch and uh, return the relevant document. As you can see, we are getting the OpenAI key connecting to the database. Uh, we are using a Snook Tinku, I think, uh, if I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it the same, but we are using a music database. Then we have the request, chat completion request uh, method or function. We pass the, the message, the tools, and the tool choice a module here you, as you can see there is a decorator this decorator uses when there is a connection interrupt or when there's a, like uh, previously asked when there's a rate limit it will stop uh, it will wait for a, a random exponential time then start retry retry again uh, i put the attempt to three in order to control that but uh, it's a method or it's a way of controlling and how uh, the request is made. In a, rather than always, uh, when you get the error, always retrying, uh, you have to use this kind of uh, decorators in, in general. In your coding, when you practice your coding, uh, using this kind of generators will help you out so much. Then we have the headers. This is it just mean the open AI key, the authentication uh, parameters. Then we have the JSON, the model, the message. This is, uh, we make the request to the open AI in the point, and we receive the response from that. Uh, this is just a prettify the result uh, in order for us to identify which is the system prompt, which is the user prompt, uh, which is the assistance uh, response, and the tool uh, that was used, and the response we got from the tool. The tool means the function we are assigning. Uh, then we have get table. This is just uh, a, a way to access the SQL database the database using a SQL. Uh, get database info, get column and name, uh, get name. Then we have to get the uh, database info. So uh, get database info, we pass the connection. Uh, we got the connection here. I think you have already know, you already know how to connect with the database. So as a schema structure, we pass this, the table name, column and, uh, column and names. So uh, then we, uh, so OpenAI doesn't understand just uh, calling the function. So uh, we just gonna give it a formatted JSON. This is the expected formatted JSON OpenAI expect as a function. You have to include the name, ask database, then the description, use the following function to answer user question about music, input should be fully formatted in a SQL query. Then we have the parameters. What's the type of input we are, object, property, query, the query type string description a sql query extracting info to answer the user question a sql should be written using this database schema this is as an example as you can see always when it's trying 
to formulate the SQL uh, query, it will access the schema. Then the query will be written in a plain text, not in a JSON. We have, because we have to forward this to the as a schema to fetch the data, it's not, it shouldn't be responding in JSON, it should be just a plain text. So a required query. This is, a, which means when we ask the LLM, it's gonna give us the query to fetch the data from the database based on the user query. So far, is this clear? I'm not sure. Is this clear? Because you are silent, I don't know if it's clear or not. I'm not rushing you too far, too fast or something. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so we got 15 minutes, we have to cover this. Uh, so function calling is clear for you. I'll show you the result. It will return as it is the same. It will return the question, the answer as a plain text. Then it will be feed the the. Okay, let me show you. This is the function. It will take the connection in the query that's out outputted from the LLM to answer uh, to fetch the data. You got it? Is it clear? It's just outputting a plain query. Then it will be used by the function to access the database and fetch the proper answer to the user the user query. Okay, it's clear. Okay, let me move on. Uh, okay, this is the database as we defined it. The function name, ask database. This is the ask database. When the required query is git, it will be inputted in here. Then based on the query, it will fetch the necessary uh, response to the response to the user query. Uh, then excuse function calls if let me show you. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, this should be a reason. Okay. Okay, as you can see here, this one was I'm talking about created model GPT Turbo index message role assistant. Uh, tool, uh, a function calling tool, type, uh, the type, the type is function, uh, the function name, ask database, uh, the arguments, the argument means, which means the response from LLM. As you can see, it's based on the user query, it has identified uh, as, uh, this is the user, and this is the system message. Answer user question by generating SQL uh, queries against the Chinook, Chinook music database. Then the user requested, uh, queried who's the top five artist by the number of tracks. Then it got this from the, this is the function earlier we talked about it this is the the message it's passed us the user message and 
the system message. We are we already assigned a tool there, a tool choice, which means function calling and model GPT, the GPT model we are we are currently using. And then when we go back, okay, we pass the tool. Tools means this one and message. So the result output will be something kind of like this. The function name, it will receive the this result in ask database. Uh, then the arguments are query, select artist dot name, but just the query that will access the, the specific uh, top that will help us identify the top five artists by the number of tracks. Uh, the prompt token used 407, uh, completion 67, and uh, then we have the total token 474, the system fingerprints that's not necessary. Finally, when we see it's prettified. So when we see the system message, answer the user question by generating a SQL query against the music database. The user who are the top, the user query, who are the top five artists by the number of tracks, then assistant answered, ask name, ask database argument, query, uh, select, artist does name the query the the LLM generated then we have the function the actual function that's perform that's getting the query and uh, identifying the top five tracks these are the top tracks that's identified so we have used it we have used LLM as an intermediary between user natural language query uh, query query ask using natural language then we have uh, make it or uh, it has generated an sql so uh, this is <laughs> i don't know but impressive then uh, if we are to ask uh, further questions if uh, the user is going to ask further question what's the name of the album with the most tracks uh, then uh, we just do the same thing uh, this uh, completion the target completion function uh, then we access the specific assistant message then we pass the assistant message content to the tools after that execute function will execute the function calls append then finally there's the name the assistant name ask database this is the earlier it's keeping track we are appending it to the message that's why it's keeping track but uh, it doesn't keep track of uh, the completion uh, in the point uh, the a uh, open ai chat, uh, chat completion doesn't keep track of was was asked previously yeah, you just have to append the message and on top of each other and then the previous was this one then when we ask it again what's the name of the album with the most tracks the ask databases function is accessed then the query is here another query which will help us identify the greatest hits the greatest hits, yeah. This is the album with the most tracks. So this is all about function calling. I know it must be uh, confusing to some extent, but when you experiment yourself and read about it, read about function calling further, it will be so much help to your current uh, challenge, uh, challenge, uh, document challenge work. So, any question now?
Okay, Abdul Hamid. Uh, how can we be sure that we will generate with the models? And the, that, that's the part of experiment. You have to check, is this correct? If it's not, you have to go and what's making it, what's making the output incorrect or what's differing the output from uh, accurately uh, responding to the user message. This is the part about the prompt engineering. You have to tweak the prompt. You have to uh, look at it and is this correct? Experiment with different inputs to see that it's correct really replying to not just one, two, three, but just four or five uh, input queries. Can you show us? Uh, if, if you are using, when you say thought process, the reasoning behind, are you saying the reasoning behind? Okay. Uh, Jara, can you clarify on the the thought process of LLM? I don't get your question. Uh, okay, uh, I'll share the code. Can you show us how we how to set a context? Sure. Okay. Uh, can you show us the safe context as well? I don't know. Oh, okay. Uh, how to limit the response of the open AI when it's getting out of context, uh, out of out of context equations? You just have to uh, specify if. Uh, if these are the input text, uh, if these are the input context we are using, if this is not, uh, if it's not related or it's not available within your reference, don't answer. Okay. It's just enough if you say that something like that. You just give it a direct order. If users are not asking question about relevant data sets, if it's user are not questions, uh, asking questions about out of context or unnecessary questions, you just limit the, you just limit, you just limit the system message with just respond, I don't know. Just make sure that the system message within the system message, you clearly jot down what are uh, things that must be done what are things that must be ignored. From your data, you have to clearly identify what are the inputs. And if from anything in the query that differ or different from your uh, input, you just say, I don't know. You just uh, put a boundary between the answer and the input data. Okay. Okay, uh, Jara, uh, you are appending it on your own list. It's not on the uh, OpenAI memory or anything. You're just appending it and seeing it again. It's just a list. Okay, finally, does does matter how I read the instruction? Uh, if you mean Jara, uh, if you mean how, read the instruction, you have to follow a formal uh, directive language, which means these are the input I'm going, you have to use a role. What are you, the task the LLM is going to accomplish? In your case, if it is a chatbot, you are an experienced chat, you are a chatbot for this, this is task. You have experience with this is task. Is it clear? Yeah, so when you give her that, that character, uh, she will uh, take it as a persona. 
the module will take that uh, persona. Then further, when you tweak and uh, arrange your prompt properly, the response from the GPT will be much clearer. That's how you control your input. Okay, then can we get sample code? Okay, I'll, I'll share with you. Uh, will the okay. Yeah, that's the thing about prompt engineer. That when you are, it's a growing uh, career. So the main task is how do you clearly communicate your task to LLM? When you are designing a prompt, it's all about how accurate to how extent can we make the output from LLM close to accuracy or relevant? Do you get If some of you can unmute and ask me questions, if something like that, it's better to hear it from you directly. Uh, Abdul Hamid, okay. Okay, hi, Farta. Hi, Abdul Hamid. So my question is, like, there are multiple users and there is a database. So mm. user will ask certain query that they would want to see from the database, like uh, like the example you provided. Can we get the top five best-selling artists or something like that? Mm. However, can we be sure that the output that the model uh, hello. Uh, can you? Can you uh, uh, are you breaking? Uh, hello. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. Continue. Okay. So, yeah. So my 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 uh, a bit uh, uh, where I am confused is we can we be hundred percent sure that the query that it does that. Uh, uh, model is generating is correct. There is a concept of hallucination in uh, mm. model, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, it's an ongoing research area. If you read, you know. Then what you have to do is, in order for LLM to respond correctly, give her a context, which means uh, provide her these are the content you have to use. These are the strictly follow this. You get, I, I give her an a schema, database schema. If she's going beyond that, uh, you just have to experiment. And if she's going beyond that, you have to add to the system prompt, just follow this one, strictly follow this one. Use capital letters, use any emphasis you can to guide the model to the right path. Okay, she's going to, produce inaccurate results obviously again it's your task to uh, guide the model to the correct path but is there a mechanism that where we can know uh, the query being generated is incorrect and we will then retry to uh, generate the correct query before the user uh, sees the result uh, you have to track your experiment, uh, one way is tracking your experimenting was identifying what points are making her, making the model uh, hallucinate. Uh, mm. Two, one method, if you can, uh, there's an evaluation that you can evaluate the output from the LLM, but it's mainly focusing on relevancy. If you can generate a ground truth and you can compare it with that as an evaluation, this will be the more advanced way of evaluation. Human verified ground truth. All right, thank you. Okay. Yeah, if it's not clear, you can write, but just focus on giving her the bounded, the path to correctly uh, follow the 
instruction okay it's more about guiding how much uh, how mu how accurately how much should she answer how much data should she access in in uh, incorporate within the response okay okay uh, okay is there someone is there any measure to increase it like i said uh, you can use as uh, the ground truths as uh, you can also use as human uh, intervention how accurate are the results that's the main research area nowadays how accurate how should we measure the output from llm and how accurate are the outputs but if you guide her if you give her a proper uh, instruction you it will be close to performing good okay exactly okay uh, okay i think we we don't have much more time but if you give me five minutes uh, let me show you how the assistant api works so we have uh, currently there is an advancement in openai uh, which is uh, assistant api assistant api means when you are prompting here it doesn't keep track of the state yeah you just give you an completion message but when you are using open assistant you are creating an assistant this is just a, as an experiment then we have to create the assistant the assistant will have an assistant id then and you you will give it an instruction a very to the point instruction uh, if i can show you this is this. This this was the prompt I wrote in order to evaluate if the course submitted by trainees are properly aligned with the Python package given us uh, as uh, a guideline. So first you have to give it the task was given this is all about context then identify the part which is saying this are the inputs we have used this is the for the training code this is the triple back tick is used xml tag is used for the python package and then don't comment uh, evaluation should be through impartial a python package could uh, but there's a lot of uh, a little bit details that needs to be uh, included in the description in order for the assistant to properly follow and evaluate the evaluate the given course so uh, one of the advantage of uh, L OpenAI API is it has a trade. A trade means it keeps state. You can uh, have a conversation and it will keep track of the conversation until it's reached some point. It will uh, cut, have a cut point, then it will move. Uh, all this will be managed by OpenAI. If, it was, you do, if you have a long document, it will, you have to, you will load it then from previous uh, in the completion ones you have to give it the summary of the chunk uh, or give the model chunk by chunk but in open AI assistant you just give it the uh, document it will decide when to use the which chunk when to chunk also it will decide so this is uh, a major development in uh, llm 
And then after you create the thread, you have to create a message, user message. You have to assign the in order to link which thread to use. You have to <coughs> uh, associate the thread ID there with the user message. <coughs> Uh, then you have to show the role. You have to specifically see the role in the message as an identifier. Then the, we have the run. All this is independently done. We didn't associate it with the uh, assistant module we created here. So what we did, what we're going to do next is associate the thread ID with the assistant ID. Did you get it? Thank okay. you. So then when after we associate it, if you see, always you have to check the run status here. It's queued. So if it's queued, we have another function that will access the run which means it has the trade and the assistant ID. Then if a check if it's queued status, and if it's in progress, if it's in progress, uh, there's another uh, task being done. So it will wait. Uh, it will wait, then run root, it will retrieve the run ID and the trade ID, then it will, execute the given uh, user message. So message dot list, the on, it, it's just going to give you the first message, for, the last message as first. You are a personal user, this is just showing the run. But when we execute the message, if you see the result is come, because it's going, it, it stacking on top of each other. I need to solve this. I asked it first this, but it's replying this. Uh, so it just does matter. Just it just queue. It just uh, stacking on top of each other. Mm, okay, so we got the message. If we add another message to it, uh, in an explanation, as long as you are using the same thread in the same assistant the message will be uh, continuously stuck on each other. Uh, we ask for explanation. Yeah, yeah, you have certainly have isolated the variable X. It's going to give us explanation. But you have to focus more on the prompt engineering, the system prompt, how you're going to give it, how you're going to give it the context it needs, how you, uh, you should experiment with different uh, version of prompts when you design it, uh, which is more likely, I which uh, on your experiment, keep track of which experiment is more likely close to the output we needed. Then we, another thing you have to consider is for, uh, for now, uh, we are using a smart grader. So uh, when we design the rubrics to send to the LLM, we have to we have we have experimented with different rubrics structure. Which one work better? A statement uh, so rubrics with a statement, rubrics with questions. This kind of experiment will lead you to a better result. So uh, we are currently close to uh, the designing the rubrics that's being that's being used for evaluation. It's giving us the, you just need to identify that exact point where the LLM response and the prompt you used is compatible. You have to find that one in. It will continuously be an improvement, but it will continue to give you a consistent message. 
you just have to structure your prompt to do exactly what you needed to do. I hope that that's uh, clear. Uh, yeah, you can pass any tool. You can pass. Uh, you can pass files, tools, uh, tools like uh, code interpreter, mm, tools like uh, retrieval. So you can pass everything like anything you need. Uh, retrieval means uh, it's you giving it knowledge from outside. Uh, code interpreter means it can execute uh, the code given by uh, as an input if a code is given as an input it will execute that one uh, this is it and if you have any question uh, a share to instead of Specifying that as a plain text, if we said as a visualization file, how would you respond? It's going to respond. You have to experiment it. I haven't experimented that one, but if you showing it, a, if you output needs a, a YAML uh, output, experiment in, you'll see what it will respond. Uh, okay, Brian. Okay, it was a good explanation. Can you share the source code, please? If possible. Uh, I, I, I didn't guess what you just said. What did you just It was a good explanation and a good lecture. Uh, I, was, I was asking if possible to share the source code. Yeah, oh, yeah okay. Okay. It's not clear for you, the explanation? That's clear. That's clear. Okay, I will share the source code. If you have any question, feel free. Anyone? Okay, and then that will be it for the prompt engineering introduction. And uh, next, you uh, in the afternoon, you'll see how you could use a, a little a long chain to design your back end and chatbot. So uh, it's nice to meet you all. I hope you have a nice week, a productive week. Bye.